for my class, while well, I've usually done some sort of science fair. Uh, science fair is a really great way to show what you've learned about science and how science works. And always, the classic science fair experiment is always the baking soda and vinegar volcano. It's a real showstopper, right? You build the volcano out of clay and you make a little hole and you can even add diorama and trees around it if you want to add that special effect. You put baking soda with a little red food coloring because it's got to be red, it's lava. You pour in the vinegar and poof, voila, instant science fair project. Well, in this video, we're going to be exploring volcanoes and how that science fair project actually can be really accurate. In this video, we're going to look at non-explosive volcanic eruptions. Well, we're going to be really doing four different things in this video. The first thing we're going to do is define what exactly is a volcanic, not a volcanic eruption. What is a volcanic eruption? Then we're going to classify the major traits of a non-explosive eruption. In a later video, we'll look at the explosive eruption, but let's focus primarily on non-explosive in this video. Then we're going to identify some major characteristics of a shield volcano, where we would find a non-explosive eruption. And then lastly, we're going to compare and contrast Pahoehoe lava and Aa lava. We'll get to exactly what that is. But let's get back to that science fair project. You know, you put this project in, when you put in that vinegar, the lava shoots out, really the foam, shoots out and it oozes down the volcano. That model of how that lava oozes is in all volcanoes. And in fact, here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of different types of volcanoes called composites. And it doesn't really act that way. There are volcanoes that do act that way. They act in a non-explosive way. They don't explode. They ooze. And those oozes, when it's oozing out, is a volcanic eruption. It may not be as bright and shiny and flashy as Mount St. Helens erupting, but they still are erupting. And a volcanic eruption is really when magma reaches the surface, and it can do that in both ways. So when magma reaches the surface, we call that a volcanic eruption. And like I said, there's two types. There's a non-explosive eruption and an explosive eruption. And they sound, they are just like they sound. A non-explosive eruption, it oozes, just like your volcano. An explosive one, well, that's much more exciting, and we'll get that to that in another video. So a non-explosive volcanic eruption, I want you to think of magma getting to the surface and oozing out. Well, when that happens, when magma makes it and oozes out, it forms a very distinct feature, or a very special type of volcano. If you kind of, maybe you could do this at breakfast, you take your waffle and take maple syrup and you just, just grunch it because you really want a nice sweet waffle and you just squeeze it on there. Now, if you squeeze it in one spot and you're quick enough, you'll notice that that maple syrup kind of mounds up in the middle and then flows out. If you look at it on the side, it'll look almost like a shield, like you would if you were fighting somebody. In fact, volcanoes that are formed from non-explosive volcanic eruptions are called shield volcanoes because that's how they look. They look like someone took a shield and just tipped it on the side. And they're made by layers and layers of this flowing lava. As it comes, it builds up and then dries in another eruption and blows and dry, dries and makes that nice uh, shield shape. Now, the lava in this case is really mafic, and if you go and watch the igneous, video, igneous rock video, you'll see exactly why we talk about mafic. It means really low silica, and that's really important for determining what kind of volcano you get, especially when we look at the explosive eruptions. The other thing is, it happens for long periods of time on a shield volcano. The eruptions just last and last, and so you get a nice buildup of rock, and you get that nice shield shape. Now, these are the biggest mountains on the Earth and the solar system. Now, be very careful, I said the biggest mountains. In fact, in the solar system, the biggest mountain we found is this place called Olympus Mons, which almost is Olymp Mount Olympus from Greek mythology, but it's not here on Earth, it's actually on Mars. And this volcano is a shield volcano. It built up when Mars had plate tectonics and had actually magma, doesn't anymore, and it built up so large that if you were to stand at the peak of Olympus Mons, you would actually be in space. You'd be outside the atmosphere of Mars. It's that big. It is huge. In fact, it would cover almost the size of Texas if it was here on our planet. 
On our planet, we have another really large shield volcano. In fact, it is the biggest mountain on our planet. No, it's, it, it's, not, uh, it, it's not in the Himalayas, right? It is actually Mauna Kea. It's in Hawaii. This is a shield volcano that started and oozed out at the bottom of the ocean and grew from the bottom of the ocean all the way up to the top of the ocean so it became an island and it kept going to 13,000 feet all by layers of lava oozing out. Now, 13,000 feet, that's what, almost three miles, two and a half miles up out of the water. That is a huge mountain. It formed really interestingly, we can actually see in a different video, but it formed because Hawaii is over a hot spot. And so as the plate gets shipped over the hot spot, the shield volcano builds a new island, and then it moves off and it dies and erodes away. In fact, at one point, all the Hawaiian islands were these shield volcanoes, this flowing, oozing, non-explosive. Because that Hawaii has so many of these shield volcanoes or these non-explosive eruptions, a lot of the terms for describing what we see are from Hawaii. And so we find two really different types of flowing lava, or non-explosive eruption lava. They call them Pahoehoe and A'a. Let's start with Pahoehoe. Well, Pahoehoe really is flowing lava, but it flows really slow. That slow moving makes it have little wrinkles and looks almost like a bunch of rope tied together because it's got all these bumps. You can think of it really like your maple syrup, right? You pour it over there and it kind of just oozes and slowly moves. When it dries, it has these little cracks or ropes, it looks like. On the other hand, we could have flowing lava that moves a little bit quicker. And when that moves, it forms this blocky, jaggedy lava. It's really just Clump, crumps of lava. And if you looked really close, you might even see obsidian on the outside. It's really glassy and sharp. So you have pohoi hoi and ah, but really they're descriptions of the same flowing lava. Mafic, non, just a non-explosive lava from a shield volcano. Well, what did we look at in this video? And then we went really quick. One, we defined what a volcanic eruption was. We said a volcanic eruption is when magma reaches the surface, and it could be explosive or non-explosive. And then we went and looked at the non-explosive eruptions, and we said specifically that's when it flows and oozes out, when lava flows around. There isn't any nice big explosion. It's a lot like the baking soda and vinegar volcano. Then we looked at and identified how that forms a shield volcano that's looks like a shield and it's very rounded with not very steep sides and kind of flat and saw that some of the biggest mountains in the solar system are these shield volcanoes. And then we looked specifically at the types of lava that you would see coming out of a shield. A pohoihoi, which is ropey, and a'a, which is more blocky. Well, let me remind you how these videos work. You can always go back and listen to something again or hit pause if I go too fast. Take a break and watch it one more time, it's up to you. But always remember to keep moving forward.